So hello everyone. My name is uh, uh, Matthijs Fleming. Uh, I'm a strategy consultant at, uh, at Open Social. Um, and uh, welcome to today's talk about online communities for member-driven organizations, in this case for ISF uh, and the Trade Association for the International Seed Industry. Um, we decided to do an update on the case study on the ISF online community that we have done before in May of this year. Uh, because, uh, well, at that time, especially during the pandemic, uh, the talk about online community was really uh, hot uh, because every membership organization was struggling with the engagement with their members and how to engage, how to engage them and how to move uh, uh, to their in-person events. And be, they found out they relied a lot on their in-person events for member engagement. And how do you deal with your digital engagement? Now that we are actually back to in person, luckily, uh, and everybody's meeting uh, face to face again, uh, we see that this conversation about digital engagement has become less urgent or less relevant because everybody's jumping on in person events and they're very happy and rightfully so, of course, uh, to meet face to face again. Um, uh, I think uh, key is here, of course, you hear this a lot. Uh, digital or virtual events or digital engagements will never replace in-person events. No, we hear that. Uh, we totally agree with that. Uh, we also think it's not like a boxing match between virtual and in-person. I think we should focus on best of both worlds. Uh, and we also still believe that uh, uh, looking for virtual engagement and 365 uh, engagement with your membership or with your target audience is still key for membership-driven organizations uh, to remain relevant and to increase their, their impact in the long run. Um, and that's why we thought it was timely now to do an update on the case study with ISF that we have uh, done before. Um, and that's why we have invited Ira to, uh, to actually give us an update on where ISF is currently heading with their online community. So Ara, welcome. Thank you, Matthias. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. <laughs> um, could you quickly introduce yourself and uh, the ISF? Sure. So thank you again for inviting me. So my name is Ira. I'm the Digital Media Associate for the International Seed Federation, or ISF, which, as Matisse mentioned, is an, inter it's an international trade association of seed companies and seed associations from nearly 170 countries all over the world. Um, ISF accounts for 96% of the world's seed trade, so quite a good coverage. And we have around, let's say, 7,500 member companies and associations altogether. Although on the ISF members area, which is powered by Open Social, we have around 400 members. Yes, indeed. Uh, and and uh, could you um, uh, talk a bit more about and, and you launched your community? Let's let's start from the start. You, you launched your community in March of last year. Yeah. Right. Could you elaborate a bit on the initial reasons or the pain points that you were uh, trying to solve by, uh, by yeah by using uh, Open Social, the online community platform, for your member area? So ISF, or ever since uh, it had a website, it had a private members area, which is where members would go to access important documents related to meetings or position papers, et cetera. So that was already there. And when I was hired in the beginning of 2020, one of my projects was to revamp the website, including the members area. And when we did a little survey with members on how they would like to improve the members area, many of them said like, you know, there, there should be a way to interact with other members. There should be a way to see other members, et cetera. And we were looking for a tool that could fulfill that. So uh, it took us uh, a good, you know, six or seven months or something to find something that we thought could give us that solution. And uh, we ended up with open social. And so one of the pain points is, is, is that, is that for members first to have the ability to interact with each other on the platform, to see other members, to know more about them, um, rather than just be a repository of documents, which is, of course, still important. And third was because we were also launching a new structure within the organization. We wanted a place where working groups can actually have their own workspace, um, because we were also using another tool, Basecamp, at the time for project management within groups. So we, what we wanted was all of this, like the resources, the documents, the member communication, and the working group coordination. And yeah. uh, that's what we were trying to solve. 
uh, did it also provide an answer or a solution to um, yeah the fact that during the pandemic uh, uh, yeah your in person events could not happen right you could not you could not um, uh, exchange knowledge with your uh, with your members or, or between your members because your in person events didn't happen did you organize virtual events or or how did you go about that during so the at the beginning yeah we were organizing zooms um, our main event annually which is the World Seed Congress went virtual for two years and. First one, we, we did it on a virtual Congress platform, which didn't really work well. And then the second one, we went to a studio and decided to just make it a show and live stream everything from, from our YouTube channel. And, but you know, in 2022, uh, as we launched the members area in March, 2022, um, it allowed us, the members area, to kind of have that uh, space where we could also live stream exclusive content to our members on the platform from the yeah. Congress in Barcelona. That's very interesting because there's a lot of talk, of course, after the pandemic, you know, where are we going now with these virtual events and with online community? There's a lot of talk about hybrid events uh, in, in, its, uh, in its own. That's already very much from the organizer point of view, right? Uh, hybrid, that it means that it's both virtual and in person. However, from the delegate point of view or the participant point of view, you're either in person or you're virtual, right? So it's a bit yeah. of a bit. Uh, and I see a lot of associations or organizers are struggling with how to organize their hybrid events. How did you solve it in your in your yeah in this year's event when you could finally meet in person again? What was the digital aspect of it, and how did you use the platform for it? So yeah, what we did is um, we decided that we didn't want to have like a hybrid, fully hybrid setup where you know you have the same sessions running parallel on virtually and in person so we put value first uh, we prioritize the in person events so those panel discussions the trading the networking all of that was there in place how we moved it into the digital space is kind of um, allowing some sessions to be live streamed so what we did is we did a kind of like after each one and a half hour panel discussion, there was a 30 minute talk on what went down in the panel, what were the highlights for people who couldn't join in person. So we know that people will not sit down one and a half hours for a panel discussion, but maybe for 30 minutes they can catch up on what went down and the highlights to see if there was something interesting for them. And that was live streamed also through our um, members area. Okay, and then those online discussions related to the to the live event were those taking place simultaneously then as the live event? Yeah, there were some people who were acting to to commenting during the live stream, um, not not really a lot, but uh, what we what, for us it was just really a way to say that if people really were interested in what was happening, yeah. they could access some information. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Um, and we've talked about it before, um, uh, how your community was set up. Um, mm -hmm. Right, uh, and the simple setup uh, you you've used. I, I think mm -hmm. uh, it could, would be nice if you could sh quickly show it how it how it currently yeah. looks, uh, because you uh, you've uh, adopted quite a simple and and user friendly structure. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, well, could you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Um, I think for us, because knowing our members, you know, we can't, we needed to make sure that we met their needs in terms of like communication and information sharing. And so we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Like I mentioned earlier, we have three um, main areas where we want them to, to focus on. One is the groups that they're working in, the working groups. Second is resources and documents that they need. And the third one is um, engaging with other members. So that was the main thing. We didn't want to complicate it too much, but I can share with you how it looks. So here is my screen. So as you can see, it's quite simple. At the beginning, we just have this landing page where it's welcome to the members area. So we are still accepting members. We have a user guide and uh, the, our priorities for them to create their profile. And here we're highlighting our current campaign, which is related to the climate change conference that's happening now in Egypt. And here is where we promote the live events. So usually if we have a webinar coming on, then this is where it's also coming in, if there's video that we want to promote. And the most important thing for groups is all these groups. So we have a lot of groups um, inside the community and uh, it's very easy to search through as well um, by just going through a keyword search. Finding your documents is here. That's the main thing, upcoming events and connecting with members. So as I mentioned, those are the kind of more or less the pillars of our of our members area. We have a place, a stream where people can just post and share their thoughts. But um, uh, for us, I think many of the conversations happen within the groups themselves. And um, 
yeah and that's that's so that's more private space so i can't really <laughs> share it but no, yeah that's exactly where it happens yeah and, and and what's interesting what you told me before is that when you live streamed your your in person event sessions here and people mm -hmm. could have a conversation around it that um yeah they could actually connect uh, right before during and after the event uh using the platform right using the community platform yeah so they i mean if they log in then they would see for example if the stream is already being played or not um so if it's a private stream then you know it's something that we just keep within the members area and they can comment on it they can share their thoughts etc yeah, yeah. Uh, was it also used by the uh, the in-person uh, attendees for instance to connect before the event or actually maybe share some information about the event or the venue or the city or maybe hot restaurants or things to do uh, during the event i mean for us it was mainly because during the congress itself we have our own app where all all of the delegates um communicate and, and find that information but for example during our midterm meetings last month in we were in rome um you know we organized all the events through the platform so members will have would have had to enroll in the on the members area to an event including the dinners um otherwise they wouldn't have been counted so <laughs> it was a way also for them for to encourage them to use the members area so a way to onboard them and to get them uh, actually mm -hmm. use the platform because that's how you currently use the platform right you use it as a central communication uh uh yeah place for communication with all your uh, all your communication going out to the members right yeah so what we use it mainly for is is for communications with the members in place of email so we try to avoid sending all these mass emails where you can easily mistype an email or you can easily miss out somebody as long as you send a message from a group you're assured that the group members who need to receive that message are there and that uh, if they're not there well they would have to create an account yeah yeah so it's clear that your main uh, membership engagement is built actually around existing working groups uh, and members have a clear reason to join the platform to actually collaborate year round uh, in between uh, those events which is uh, yeah a really clear uh, use case for uh, for your members to use the platform um, and and since we talked in may i know in may uh, you uh, defined uh, uh, specific goals you're right uh, on the, on the added value for isf that the community platform should have Mm -hmm. um, could you elaborate a bit on those? Shall I? Shall, shall we first repeat? We said uh, you wanted uh, your members to participate in conversations and contribute to the association community's joint mission, mm -hmm. right? So to have mm -hmm. uh, conversations outside of the in-person events, but actually provide them with tools to have those conversations year, year round. Um, feel stronger part of the ISF community, so enhance that feeling of belonging or feeling of community with your own uh, community platform and uh, attract new members by showing the world what the ISF uh, community is so maybe some word of mouth marketing or showing uh, some social yeah. proof there uh, could you elaborate a bit on how 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 you are doing on those three goals so those three goals are still very much relevant and we're still working on that and yeah so we're slowly even achieving some steps towards achieve I mean to realize this goal so for example um, in our recent uh, meetings with the members, we had a session for 10 minute feedback on the members area and everybody was saying that they were happy that it was there. It's an easy to use tool. It was useful, which is the most important. Um, and that, you know, it was something that they will keep on using. And for us, so at least you know for them it was also a way to connect with other members and a way to connect with the secretariat and for on the side of the secretariat it actually facilitated work and uh, rather than added another layer of things to do um so that was really good and i guess in the future what we're trying to do we're working with our um, open social contact to uh, further develop the platform to allow invoices to be paid or at least issued from the platform and members to be able to pay directly on the platform and also to uh, further integrated with our microsoft 365 so that the workflow that happens in teams can also just be easily done from the platform yeah and can you tell us a bit about the the, the, the amount of members that have adopted the, the the platform and that have signed up and that are uh, actually using it as well yeah so we yeah, we were surprised that we have as, as as of now like 400 members more than 400 members in the platform which is more than we thought at the beginning um which is really good because 
because of the platform's popularity, we decided to actually accept members who are not necessarily part of groups, but who just want to be part of the community. Okay. So before we were very strict that no, it's only for working groups, but because other people were saying like, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a member of ISF, even if I'm not a member of a particular group, and I would just like to see how it looks like, you know, have the chance to interact with other members, which we decided is also, you know, it's a good idea because group content, which is maybe private and confidential anyway, is protected. So they wouldn't be able to access it, but they still have access to the community and uh, you know interact and share their thoughts on, on different topics that we promote there. Okay, and do you see that happening? So do you see those members that actually don't have a particular predefined group to join or, or project to work on together? Do you see them actively joining as well or opening discussions or having conversations with other members related to, to ISF and ISF matters? I, I believe so. I mean, we don't see all the private messages. Obviously, no. we don't know how many messages are being sent between the members, but yeah. we, what we see, that's why, for example, we have this campaign on climate change, which is not necessarily related to groups, but it's for the community to be for them to be aware. And then because it's posted there, there are members saying like, oh, I want to participate. How can I join? Um, how can I contribute? And, you know, that's much better than it being there than me sending an email to people I don't know, you know, so that yeah. has really helped in that sense. Okay, cool. That's great. Um, and then talking because you've used it now for I think almost half a year, uh, mm -hmm. and I think in the beginning we elaborated on you know some some benefits for staff. Uh, we we talked in the I think when we just launched that especially membership manager. I think Marie was very happy that she actually her work uh, was a, a lot uh, basically uh, replaced with mm -hmm. people finding their own way on the platform and finding relevant content and relevant members. Right? Yeah. How is that going in in the meantime? Is she gone or is she no? <laughs> <laughs> no, she. I think she's very happy. I mean, she's also quite an active user, obviously, because she manages the groups and the membership in the groups, but. For her, it's easier because she just sends messages from the platform rather than from her own email. She can check within the platform who is a member of which group yeah. and update that if needed. And uh, like I said, one of the things that she heard her wish list is to be able to issue invoices and for members to be able to pay from the platform. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool to hear that because it looks like it's, it's become a central part of your communication, but not only communication, also of your work processes, of your workflows, actually, because your members are there then, right? Yeah. Uh, and you, that, which means you can make it more a central part of your operations or, or what, what you're doing. Uh, yeah, and now it's, it's really an indispensable part of my work and of everybody's work, because if there's a meeting that's about to happen, all the preparation takes place in the members area. Yeah. Um, we've moved, I mean, it still happens, but we are moving slowly to do it exclusively on the members area. Obviously, there are some people who, you know, adapt faster than others. But in, in general, what we want is to avoid having to send an email about an event to somebody. Yeah, um, we, we've touched on events a lot. Do you uh, do you have some other examples of how you are engaging your members or, or some engagement strategies and maybe also how you are onboarding them uh, yeah. or how you are connecting your members? So one of the things that, that came out from our meetings recently in Rome is that people wanted to have that kind of experience of onboarding. So whenever they have new staff coming on and, you know, they, you know, maybe they they need to be you know brought up to speed on the members area. So what we're doing is kind of producing, planning to produce training videos of how to use the members area and onboarding calls with them, with those new members. So that's one of the things that um, I have to work on um and uh, yeah that that's that's basically it yeah okay um uh, you also talked a bit about approving documents or collaborating uh, mm -hmm. on projects and uh, how do you use the platform for that so yeah so in terms of the benefits for isf staff one of the things that we didn't necessarily pursue directly but we realize now is an important advantage is kind of related to knowledge management so we know that when staff leave you know there are things that get lost along the way and with the members area we decided that it will be a good place where people can approve documents um directly so once a document is, is uploaded, then members who are part of this group or who are relevant to the approval of this document can just type in, I approve, I approve, I approve. And whoever has access to that group can check, you know, in full transparency, what what's the history of this document, how was it approved, who approved it, um, rather than that, all of that information sitting in someone's email. Yeah. 
Yeah, and again, it being a central place where you can find this, uh, yeah. right? And and when people leave, indeed, or when members leave or staff leaves, that it's all available there. Exactly. Um, um, but can you tell us a bit more about the long-term plans for for the ISF community? Because I think uh, you know <laughs> you started uh, as it being a replacement for the member area, <clears throat> and I think on the uh, yeah, and in the longer run, we've seen how to integrate it with your in-person events mm -hmm. and the digital functionality that maybe was not planned to use it mm -hmm. that way, but was added because you know um, your members were there and maybe they were asking for it or you found it being useful. Um, what is what what's uh, how what what role does the all the platform play in your in your long term strategy? So it will. I mean, the, the platform is staying no matter what. And in our long term strategy, as I said, we want it to be a value added um, option to membership in ISF. It's like yes, you are a member of ISF. You have access to the working groups. You have access to our physical events, but you also have access to this online community where you can work better with other members where you can interact with them and where you can also just have day-to-day -day interactions um, or or coordination with them and for that's one and then for us from the staff side from the secretariat side it is a way to facilitate work to make sure that everything is transparent and documented and that people know what's happening even when people leave and uh, as I said, in the long run, even it becoming a financial tool for us to um, actually invoice members and attract more new members. Yeah, and um, and so it, so it looks like it's become a, um, a vital way not only to build an online community but also in your member management, right? And how to mm -hmm. run that uh, efficient. That, that's interesting to see that. Mm -hmm. um, can you say something about because a lot of associations uh, fully depend mostly on in-person events, right, for their member engagement and for connecting their members, uh, yeah. maybe a couple of days throughout the year. But the rest of the year, there are a lot of emailing going on top down, uh, right? Um, what could you uh, say about the relevance or the need for for other associations to make a switch to actually, you know, uh, use uh, and, and not necessarily a uh, uh, the same platform, but a mm -hmm. platform like Open Social to actually build online community and online engagement. Do you have any statistics on uh, on younger generations of members, for example, or members that would maybe not engage at all, but now they are engaging because they they were not able to attend an event, uh, but at least now they have access to the community. What are your thoughts on on this? I mean, for me, like uh, it's not either or. I mean, you can have in person events and the digital or engagement model that complements each other. I mean, for us, we accept that not every member can go to our in person events, either because of the restrictions with travel with costs, resources, etc. And but at the same time, you have to give those members a way to participate in your activities and doing this digitally has been really valuable for ISF. Um, for example, we know that there are some members who are very active on the members area, but we've never met personally and probably will, you know, it will take a long time for us to meet physically because they're not the ones who typically attend our in-person events, but they're very active within the ISF working groups and, they're, and their voice is, is quite crucial because they are, they are very important, uh, you know, important part of that group. So for them to be able to show and demonstrate just how active they are within our community through the platform, for example, is, is a really an added value. So that's just one example. And then I think the second one is that when you have those in-person events, you know, the coordination that happens before that and the planning that happens before that can always take place digitally. So we see that, you know, we save effort with the emailing and everything, because we have one place where we have all the event details and all the necessary documents uh, related to that event. But also um, for, for resources for on our side that we don't um, necessarily just waste a lot of, yeah, like money even, um, inviting people, uh, calling people, emailing different things. Um, through the platform. So I think they just complement they just have to complement each other. Whatever tool you end up using or you end up choosing, they have to complement each other and make not just your life easier as the secretariat, but also add value to the members. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think what it what it also clearly shows is that you um while you have uh, uh you, while you're engaging with your members uh in the platform, let's you know, basically it's 365, right? Yeah. Uh, and you're building that community together that you're actually becoming more community driven 
uh, instead of only focusing on the event, which um, you know, which excludes by definition then the members that are not there, but also is limiting to only the physical people being physically there and limiting to a couple of days a year. And I think those um, those uh, members you say that would never go to events or not likely go to events, uh, it would be quite hard to engage them uh, if you would just be emailing them throughout the year, right? Or just inviting them for separate uh, Zoom meetings or, or virtual events, for example. Exactly. I mean, yeah, it's still a work in progress, but definitely for us, um, having act, having this members platform there, knowing that all the members that we want to be are already registered makes it easier even mentally just to think like you have this space if you need something from one person in particular or from a group of people it's very easy to reach them in the safe place yeah indeed all right well uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, ara for this update um i i want to i want to round up uh, uh with one thing and which is share um um uh, an, an ebook uh, that uh, that I've written for Open Social about this a while ago. Uh, it's talking about uh, just this uh, topic, right? How to move uh, from actually from an event-led engagement model to more community-led engagement model. And I, I love what um, what you said also in previous interview, Ara, that uh, I have realized that you're actually uh, what the most value you offer to your members is actually the community uh, of other ISF members, uh, and not just events. Um, uh, and I think that is um, that is a big shift that a lot of associations are making. Uh, and I love, uh, there's a lot of talk about that still, but it often gets very abstract or maybe a bit high level. Uh, I, I love from the IFSF example that is actually showing practical value and practical examples on how that's, uh, that's working. So thanks a lot um, uh, for sharing that, uh, Ara, for the update. Um, and uh, for those of you interested, uh, go to our website uh, to download uh, the ebook uh, for free to to read up more about um, yeah about the topic we've been discussing today. Um, uh, and thank you very much. Well, thank you again for inviting me. And again, like if anybody has any questions about our experience, um, feel free to contact me. All right. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.